Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, there's just a couple uh, news stories I wanted to discuss tonight. It wasn't a very eventful day for me, so I didn't really want to do a live stream. Uh, I did go see a movie, um, which I'll discuss tomorrow with Tariq. Uh, you probably, maybe some of you saw my live stream with Tariq from, I think, two or three days ago. Uh, interesting guy. Um, we're going to discuss, you know, a number of uh, issues cropping up. Uh, some of them are race relations related, but some of them are, you know, general U.S. politics. Uh, some of the things that I noticed are gaining traction are kind of bringing the Trump administration on the upswing. Uh, you know, they're trying very hard right now to uh, promote this Stormy Daniels story. But, you know, it's I get it. Like, it's, it's kind of funny and I, I would laugh at it, too. Uh, but I think the majority of people don't really care right now about Stormy Daniels, with all due respect, because, uh, you know, the the level of the office has been lowered so much, uh, probably due to President Clinton as much to, you know, Trump's own past. Trump did cheat on both of his previous wives, by the way. So why would <laughs> why would be be being uh, married to Melania Trump really matter so much? Um, but in any case, we don't, we don't know what really happened. I saw the Palmer report, which is an idiotic, uh, um, you know, if, if people want to talk about fake news, the Palmer report is right up there. Uh, but they're, they're for the other side, you know, they're, they're spreading fake news about, um, you know, Trump administration too. So they claim that it had to do with some uh, unborn child or something, you know, uh, uh, not to say that something couldn't have, have happened. The, what's, what's really the issue is what do people care about right now? And in terms of that, Donald Trump is, is very much winning uh, in terms of what people care about. Uh, there's a lot of shows where, you know, I'll talk, especially with Carlos, about things that really do matter, things that are of substance, of policy. And, and that's where we kind of get our, you know, we put our thinking caps on and, and really you know, well, sometimes we're, we're at odds with each other. I think we were sort of at odds with each other over the West Virginia strike story, for example. You can go back a couple of days. Uh, you know, me and Carlos were talking about that. But uh, with Donald Trump, it, it, it works very differently. It, with him, the substance isn't always what really matters. Uh, he, he's very good at presentation and marketing and 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 crafting an image that works with a lot of people and <clears throat> getting a response that uh, creates a certain uh, uh, well yeah cre he creates a response that works in a certain way in his interest sometimes it's a it's a reaction in his favor by parts of the country sometimes it's an overreaction by his opponents and that's <clears throat> that's really the that, that that's the best that I can describe it and uh, one of the people who has become part of that uh, mechanism, he's become an example of it, is this Kyle Kashev guy. So I had on Twitter, you know, I'm not a big fan of Twitter, uh, as some of you know, but I do use it. Uh, I think it's probably the least, the least fun of all of the social media ones. Here we go, Jack Pasovic. So second show this to you uh jack basobic highlighted what he calls the difference between uh kyle kashev who's one of the he's one of the main um he, he's a survivor of the parkland shooting and emma gonzalez and and he, he puts this good thing i was already planning on sleeping in tomorrow by emma gonzalez when betsy davos the education sector secretary was going to visit the um, her high school, the one that went through the shooting. So she she just blew off the visit. She said, "Oh, I'm not even going to go to school. Forget it." And then you see, Kashev says, it "Was so great meeting uh, first lady and president, real Donald Trump. They're true patriots. Thank you, Kellyanne Conway. Basically, I would now." What I think is, 
I think this guy is, is uh, by the way, I, I did see him put some positive um, positive reactions to meeting, I think, Senator Chris Murphy, who's a Democrat of uh, Connecticut. So he's not a totally partisan guy, this Kyle Kashev. But <clears throat> one of the things I find is, is a bit annoying with him is that he does go everywhere and try to highlight, hey, I met with Ted Cruz. Hey, I met with uh, Tucker Carlson. Hey, I met with um, uh, Jim Acosta of CNN. Interesting. So this this guy, uh, you know, a shooting survivor. I think he's also using the the shooting in a certain way to get attention. Uh, it's yet yet to be determined whether it's attention to actually create change and 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 uh, uh, you know accomplish a certain goal, or if it's attention just for the sake of of itself, um, just for its own sake. But we'll see. What I think is different with with some of the other people who have been trotted out, and you know, I don't want to go too too deep on it because uh, you can just get banned for no reason for criticizing the other people. Uh, so some of the other people have have used it in order to uh, basically further a political agenda uh, and and become confrontational. And those those people are the ones that uh, Kashev is is reacting to. But one of the reasons that he's he's gotten so much momentum in the past couple of days is because he rebuked a couple of his uh, fellow shooting survivors who laughed at the fact that they hung up on the White House and said, that, oh, we're not going to even talk to the White House. Well, for him, I, th I think it worked out very well for, for the time being because he has this perception right now that he is willing to go and speak to people without uh, using it as, as, a, as an attack uh, you know, an attack um, method. You know, he, he's not he's not going to confront these politicians. In many cases, this Kyle Cash of guy, who you know, maybe I'm not going to tell you to follow people on Twitter. So forget forget that. But maybe maybe check out some of his communications, and you see that the difference in attitude has propelled him upward. While these other people, the people who were who were doing all these demonstrations and and yelling at at, at uh, and, and and the CNN town hall people, you know the, the pro gun control survivors have worn out their welcome with a substantial portion of America, such that it, it's going to be a problem for them going forward, uh, getting you know uh, getting the attention of, of of people that they've already alienated. This guy not so much, you know. It's yet yeah, sure sure it could be that. In the future, uh, even the not too distant future, he'll alienate a lot of other people. But uh, the, by, by the way that he's speaking and the way that he's interacting with people, it's, it just isn't happening. It, it looks like he's he's actually building some momentum, <coughs> and um, you know we'll just have to wait and see. But this Kyle Cash of uh, first of all, just by meeting with Melania Trump. And, and also Donald Trump. I think the article I have has a meeting with the first lady and he's, he's just talking and uh, watch out. Um, says here, uh, first lady Melania Trump met with a survivor of the Parkland, Florida uh, High school shooting at the White House on Thursday. The, the visit was one of many Kyle Cash of a student at Stoneman Douglas High School made during his trip this week to Washington, Washington D.C. to discuss a path forward to preventing similar tragedies from happening in the future. Uh, it was wonderful to meet Cash of today. His message of unity is one we should all share. Thank you for visiting us at the White House and hope you enjoyed your meeting with the president. Uh, visit, wishing you much success at with at the reach out app, the first lady tweeted on uh, the visit Thursday morning. So <laughs> the, other, the other weird thing is that he's promoting this reach out app. Uh, you know, may, maybe I'll check it out, but I, I, I'm not thrilled at everything this guy is doing. I'm just saying he has a better approach than the other people that uh, you know who I'm talking about. The people that have, have basically, they've, they've also, you know, there, there was a, a journalist from The Hill that started saying, well, it's kind of weird that the White House is promoting this guy, their meetings with him, 
suddenly that like they're, they're they're really trying to make it look like they're meeting with this Parkland shooter, like it's some sort of political message. And and <laughs> people reacted. They're like, well, no. First of all, first of all, this guy reacted. He said, no, I wanted them to post about the meeting because I wanted to t I wanted to bring awareness to to um you know my my perspective of the, of the issue. So. Um, <clears throat> You know, the, the, this this reporter was trying to make it seem like the White House was using this guy in order to promote their agenda. However, if, if you look at this guy's timeline, he had been trying to get a meeting with the White House for, I think, over a week. OK, so, um, you know, maybe you can blame him if you want to blame the survivor for wanting me to meet the president and call him a self promoter. Um, you, you can do that, I guess, because for some reason. Uh, you're not getting censored like like the people that criticize the other survivors did. Uh, that's that's the weird part that you that somebody could criticize this guy and not get banned for, from Twitter, but the other the the other people who um, <laughs> were being criticized. Oh uh, no 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 tweets for you, buddy. <laughs> that, that was basically their <coughs> their media reaction to this. They were saying, oh these these uh, survivors are getting harassed. And whatever. Look, when when you put yourself out in the public and uh, just um, you know you're you're also being very vocal and confrontational. Uh, don't don't use your status as as a survivor in order to protect you from criticism because uh, ultimately these people were not physically harmed during the shooting. Uh, there were people there are people who oppose their views who actually lost children in the shooting. So it's it's a very important distinction. If you're getting involved in the political arena based on an issue that's important to you, um, you know, you, you can't blame people for criticizing you. That's that's why. And, you know, I, I happen to disagree with their political perspective. I'm, I'm an anti-gun control person. But if, if they would have civilly proposed gun control and, and, and acted in a dignified manner, you, you know, I, I don't think that I would have had as much of a problem with what they're doing as I do. You know, and I've 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 refrained from, you know, some of the crap that other people have done. You know, accusing them of, of uh, you know, this and that or whatever, <coughs> which might be true, might not be true. Um, it's hard to tell because you get censored for for talking about any of that. That's the real problem. The censorship is the real problem. Um, <coughs> not that not that people are getting, uh, you know, criticized. You know, I get criticized on my channel too. Uh, what what if I tried to, you, you know, made up some crap that I was a victim of, and said, "Oh, you can't criticize uh, Razor Ray's Chef Leopard, Bold Like a Leopard channel." You know, it, it traumatizes me. Uh, you'd say it's ridiculous. Get the fuck over yourself, dude. Um, other things, other things that are very uh, interesting with uh, Mr. Trump. <coughs> So North Korea, apparently there's confirmation uh, through Reuters and the South Korean National Security Office <coughs> that <coughs> there will be a meeting at some point, uh, probably in May, between Donald Trump and the Supreme Leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un. No, I think I think that's fine. I don't want I don't want any uh, war with North Korea. I'm I'm sure most of you don't. Um, <coughs> I'm not a fan of them, but I, I also don't want to have any wars at the moment because you know I think we have all we can handle. Uh, also, a, a very interesting uh, tidbit: a lot of these reports are saying that he's willing to give up his nuclear weapons program, and what I think could happen if if that does happen, okay, if, if it does happen, and uh, I think that there's a few roadblocks on the way to that, but, you know, let's, let's see what, what lays in, in that path. If, if he does do that, uh, Donald Trump will probably be considered one of the more, you know, one of the big dynamos in international diplomacy of all time. All, all after people said that he, he was, uh, you know, a garbage in, on international relations. He would ruin our relations with the rest of the world if he was to pull this off. 
Uh, Donald Trump would probably be considered, uh, you know, on, on a par with uh, Kissinger, you know, and, and those of you that have criticism for, criticism for Kissinger, hold, hold on a second. I'm not saying that his policy wise, he's the same thing. I'm saying in terms of diplomatic uh, prowess, in terms of being able to to get people to the negotiating table, uh, he, he will be considered one of the brilliant diplomatic minds of, of the of history, I guess. You know, if, if he can do it and, and you know, uh, it's yet to be determined. Again, everything we're talking about here with this cash of guy, can he get anything done with meeting Donald Trump? I don't know. It looks like he's making a little more progress than some of these other people uh, with North Korea. Uh, President Clinton, I think, was he was trying to negotiate with North Korea uh, a few a few times. Ended up, I guess, <laughs> giving them nuclear technology in the process. But you know, let's let's say he he did he was a master diplomat, President Clinton. Uh, those of you that know the the uh, Dayton peace accords in, in Bosnia. Uh, could not have been completed without President Clinton. Uh, the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland could not have been completed in, in without President Clinton. And the Oslo Accords and, and the, I guess the, uh, what was it? The Y River Accord later, but, but uh, you know, the Rose Garden meeting between Arafat and Yitzhak Rabin. So despite all of the problems that have occurred since then, uh, that was a major accomplishment for President Clinton. If you put it on its own, getting the agreements in all those cases was a major accomplishment for President Clinton. All the flaws aside, uh, he was a master diplomatic president. He knew he knew how to talk to people. He knew how to talk, how to, talk to enemies. You know, he, that that was one of the things that uh, made him a, a very respected figure on the international stage. Him specifically. <laughs> his, his wife's a different matter. His wife couldn't settle anything. She was probably one of the worst secretary of states we've ever had. Um, you know, I, I don't know what accomplishments she had as secretary of state. Uh, apparently she did have some good, um, she had this Asian pivot thing where she was trying to get America to focus more on relations with East Asia as opposed to just on the Middle East. Uh, I, I heard that was a good thing. You know, reading a little about her history as Secretary of State, <laughs> but, but given events that have been uh, that have unfolded since then with Benghazi and with uh, certain uh, issues with <laughs> with her actual administration of the State Department and uh, pay-to-play stuff that she's been been accused of and that there's some um, evidence of. Yeah, I don't think she's going to be thought of as a very good diplomat in the future. Um, <clears throat> you know, our relations deteriorated with a number of countries under Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and John Kerry. And uh, if, if Donald Trump was to succeed and, and what success means, I, I don't know. Disarming the North Koreans of their nuclear weapons is, um, you know, we'd have to figure out how that gets validated. But if it, it does happen, and, you know, that ushers in a new era of, uh, of, of, of diplomacy between the North and the South, possibly some sort of uh, real end of, of, of the hostility between them, then, no, you, you won't be able to call Donald Trump anything that besides a diplomatic, uh, you know, superstar if, if he did do it, okay? Uh, if he can't get it done, you know, uh, what are you going to do? You, you have to try. It, you can't you can't just always try to uh, <coughs> box a country in and go to war. Um, you know it's 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 hard it's easy to say oh bomb North Korea, nuke them, uh, make an example of them. Sure, uh, that's an approach to things, but um, is it the best way to settle the dispute on the peninsula? No, I think most Koreans don't want war, whether you're in the north or the south. And uh, it could be that uh, Kim Jong Un uh, has has made a calculation that this would not be the best thing for him, and not the best thing for you know his country and and whatever he thinks is important. Um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think that at the moment it looks like that could be, uh, you know, in terms of appearances, it looks like it's a very good thing for Donald Trump because people were saying, oh, he's he's pushing the North away. You're not going to want to deal. This is bizarre. Why is he, you know, why is he ruining our chance for for 
for diplomacy with them. Well, apparently he didn't. Apparently, and, and if he does succeed, that's a major defeat for the international media because they said that he's a loose cannon and he can't get any of these things done. Well, it, it looks like something is getting done. Now, in terms of the tariffs, <coughs> you have an article up from um, Chicago Tribune talking about uh, Granite City, Illinois, which is in the southern southern end of the state. And apparently <coughs> there is going to be a plant restarted, steel plant. You know, they're, they're going here, talking to the community care center guy. Uh, for some laid off workers, it was difficult to take help. The steel workers mentality, I think a lot of them were slow to admit they needed help. But we tried to show them that it's not a hand up, it's a hand up. You know, there's, here's a guy who says, we're really hopeful for our families. I don't want to convey that this is all or nothing, but it's a big deal. We're a very humble middle Midwest blue collar town. He said, people here are kind to each other and there's a strong sense of community here. People are really excited about it. There isn't anybody in our community that doesn't know some people who work at that plant. So no, notice the what, what's important here. You know, you can, I don't know if, I mean, Donald Trump is mentioned at the beginning, but what's important here is that if, if you see evidence of certain industries that Trump promised to help getting reignited, um, the, the image of that uh, starts to bolster Trump's standing in, in the Midwest where he's already earning more and more support. Okay, so a lot of people in the Midwest, <coughs> you know, they, they, they grabbed onto his uh, rising star during the election with the belief that he would bring jobs back, you know, Youngstown, Ohio, uh, in, in parts of Indiana, you know, in, in the industrial heartland of America, uh, Michigan, you know, it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal for those people. Uh, a lot of people from those same states said, well, nobody's gonna help us. We're not even gonna vote. Or, or some of them were, you know, hardcore union people, they voted for Hillary Clinton. If, if these things continue to happen, and you, you do get a lot of these jobs coming back to these these Midwest towns. Uh, that that's a huge, huge, huge problem for Democratic, uh, you know, officials. Okay, uh, it's good for Donald Trump, very bad for the Democrats. If some of these stories start to, uh, you know, attract press attention, because it's all a matter of perception. Uh, it may be that these tariffs uh, adversely affect. The U.S. consumer. I, I discussed that with uh, Akil Aleen. Uh, <coughs> I think that was two weeks ago. You know, he, he's a anti. And I, I think I think I would consider him an anti-Trump guy, uh, who who considers himself a, li a libertarian. You know, and, and he he made the case that you know these these tariffs and the, these trade wars, yeah, they're they're bad for the consumer and the economy. Uh, yeah, that I I think that there's plenty of evidence of that. However. Um, if people don't notice it, if, if it gets lost in the, in the news, if people don't realize it, uh, no, it, it actually helps him a lot. Um, you, you know, and I think that to a certain extent, yes, there will be an effect on the consumer. People, people will end up paying more for a number of products. And, and that's why I, I, I am not really feeling the tariff at the moment. Uh, I'm I'm not convinced it's a good idea. Uh, you know, I'm not as stringently opposed to it as some of my, you know, more doctrinaire libertarian uh, acquaintances are. But, <coughs> you know, I, I'm not convinced that it's a good move. But who's, who is convinced that it's a good move? People who have wanted these industries back in the U.S. to give them jobs or to, to give them their jobs back. Those people are going to love it. And, and again, you know, uh, it's, it's difficult for some people to accept it. Uh, Donald Trump is not necessarily trying to attract the vote of every single voter in America. But he's a, he, he does know which voters he wants to attract. And if he can attract more voters throughout the Midwest and throughout some of these swing states, you know, Minnesota, uh, I'd say, you know, what's another one out there in the middle? Uh, Colorado, um, 
Arizona, just to keep Arizona, um, you know, New Mexico, uh, Virginia, so, some of these swing states, New Hampshire, I think are, are going to start, you know, shifting a bit towards his column if this continues to happen, especially if he can get industries to reopen where they are. If he can't, you know, maybe nothing will change. So those are my thoughts for today. Uh, I know, <coughs> you know, so, some of this stuff is, is just me prognosticating and I don't have a lot of concrete stuff to go on, but I think it, it's been a very good beginning to the week for, for Donald Trump, as opposed to, you know, last week and the week before that, where he was, he was unveiling supposed new gun control measures that, which I'm, I, I cannot get on board with those. Okay. He, he can, he can say, Oh, this is necessary for me to do. Uh, but I don't, I don't give a shit. I, I'm, you know, the second amendment to me is more important than supporting any politician. And that includes, uh, Donald Trump. If, if Rand Paul, who's, who's, you know, my personal favorite in, in, you know, the political scene right now, if he was to support gun control, uh, I, I'd be totally off, off board with him. Um, you know, especially with curtailing a number of uh, rights and, you know, due process and whatever. Uh, that, that's a very huge strike against Donald Trump. Uh, I, I think that eventually that law is going to uh, crash against the rocks and, and, and die. So, you know, long term, maybe not as big of a deal as you would think. But, uh, yeah, it, it did worry me and I still don't like it. So that's it. Uh, have a good night. Like, subscribe, uh, share, and uh, comment.